Thank you so much, Daniela Ganosa, la charla. How are you guys? Good, how are you? Hi, Zalo, how are you? Good to see you again. Good, good, nice to see you. Awesome, uh, Vanessa, uh, this would be uh, the first time with you. Uh, Sholo, we had him exactly a year ago. Whoa, <laughs> no way, for real? For season three. <laughs> Whoa, savage. Nice, yeah. nice to meet you, Daniela. <clears throat> nice to meet you guys. And it's nice, it's nice to meet you. Nice to see you again, Sholo. So um, I'm going to do a brief introduction for the podcast and we will start. Okay. Amigos de la charla, feliz año nuevo. Abrimos eh, esta nueva temporada de la charla del 2022 con dos invitados. Eh, uno de ellos ya estuvo acá eh, justamente hace un año increíble y también nos acompaña por supuesto otra gran protagonista de esta serie que ya entra en su cuarta temporada estamos hablando de Cobra Kai bienvenidos welcome hey, hola thank gracias you, thank you. Vanessa Rubio y Sholo Maridueña um, so uh, we're not gonna we now we can talk about spoilers because the full season is on um, I, I, of course, I don't want to talk about absolutely everything, but at least we can say this is not the last season. <laughs> and that's what everybody was surprised about. Um, tell me, what was your reaction once you, you know, once you know, once you uh, were told that, okay, this is not it. We're going for another season. When was that and how did you learn and what was your reaction? I don't know. I feel like people somehow know way before I do. And then by the time it comes to me, everyone's like, oh, you didn't know? We already got renewed for season five. Uh, yeah. We're, we're, and I'm like, no, I didn't know. Like, uh, like I, I, and because of that, I feel like I'm always like, yeah, we, yeah, we have a season five. Yeah. Like, right guys. Like I'm, I, I, I really hope that we just get to keep doing it as long as it like, keeps being good and as long as we are able to keep it fresh and not have it get old and and honestly I would love nothing more than the show to you know continue for as long as it's supposed to continue for and and that's I think kind of it's a hard thing to gauge when when you're uh, when you're the number one show for 10 days like it's, yes. it's like well let's we got spinoffs and we got other stuff that we <laughs> you know what I'm saying like it's it's a little hard but but we'll make it happen yeah, I, I hope we have spinoffs. That would be amazing. Uh, Diaz, Diaz family spinoff. What? Uh, <laughs> <Hello>. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's it was great. I don't know. At the end of season four, I kind of I just assumed that we were going for season five. I didn't even check or <laughs> ask anybody. I was like, we're we're doing this. Uh, we just finished filming season five in December of 2021. So. Uh, that was cool. And I think we were all surprised that we got called back so quickly last year to film season five. So that was a surprise because we were all saying goodbye to each other at the end of season four, like, see you next year. And then we're like, oh, no, we'll see you. And then they scorpion Mortal Kombat, get over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's exact, that was exactly it. That's funny. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I've talked uh, to um, Ralph and William about, and I, and I want to talk with you about as well, is I can count with the fingers of one hand the reboots that have been made in Hollywood, the second parts, the continuations that have worked. And they are made every day. They want to revive things that worked really well in the 80s and the 90s. And sadly, in most cases, it just doesn't work. Now, um, I know that probably you would say, well, you know, the whole family can watch, you know what, the whole family can watch uh, Ghostbusters as well. Or, or, you know, or Matrix, which is saw it. Like, it's not, I, I don't think it has to do with the family. What is it? Because again, I can count with the fingers of one hand, the reboots and the, and the, not the, the you know, the new stories or the, the continuations or something uh, from series or 
uh, movies that have worked back in the 80s and 90s and that are working right now? Uh, I think it just comes from the intentions of the creators. Like I, I think, you know, as, as they say, like they wanted to bring back the karate kids since they experienced it the first time, you know, all the way mm -hmm. back in high school mm -hmm. or, or however old when they, you know, all finally ended up meeting each other. They were like, this, this has been a dream of ours for so long. And it's only because of all of those other reboots that have been done that they even had the confidence to be like, maybe we can do this. And, and I think, you know, the, the reality is, is that they were <clears throat> the biggest super fans of the karate kid that there are. And, and I feel like it, and, you know, I think it's sometimes it's a little corny to say like, it's not about the money or this, this and that, but for them, it was like, they are so passionate about this right. that they were like, we are going to create this whole universe <laughs> about this character that like was not even like the main character, you know, was like the, the villain of the story and everyone hated him. And they were like, we're going to, let's do something crazy. And, and here we are. <laughs> I think, oh, yeah. yeah, coming off of that, it is kind of like an alternative view. So that immediately gets you interested. And it's, <sighs> It, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Like Sholo said, the three producers are the biggest fans. So they treat it with the love that a, a true karate fan would treat this project with. And then I think there's also an element that the new characters carry the story forward and they're not uh, stayed characters. They're allowed to evolve into themselves and to bring their inner essence to the, to the roles, which uh, I think is a wonderful thing. And there's also this timeless element that is the, I think the center of it, this, I mean, for me, the Karate Kid, the meat of it is the relationship of Mr. Miyagi and Daniel Sun, right? So that's the timeless element that then we get to see go through these different evolutions surrounded by all of these wonderful new characters, a really great real life sense of humor that doesn't take itself too seriously. So you're getting fed a lot of beautiful things without realizing it because you're laughing the whole way. You're mentioning, you both are mentioning uh, my next question, actually. The humor, especially for Johnny, for William, those lines are just <laughs> every single time, you know, that, that, that the show shows you how lost and, 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 and so not updated Johnny is about the world of today and how politically incorrect he is. But it's just hilarious. It continues being hilarious after four seasons. Those writers are doing an amazing job. Um, that, of course, you know, with everything else, Eagle Fang, who had that idea? That was amazing. That was that was funny. And also, Sholo, I think all the fans of the songs, we've we've heard, we've heard them all, most of them, you know, the songs of the karate kid. And we were already like asking what is going to happen with Glory of Love? Where is Glory of Love? I think there is a rendition of Glory of Love, I guess, in episode four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 I, I you know I think something that they've managed to do so well is incorporate the nostalgia without having it be too like on the nose or without having it be too forced and and I think that that's like that's kind of been the part that as an audience member, I'm kind of like apprehensive about is if they're like, are they just going to dump all of these old characters and like bring everyone back? And they've found a way to kind of uh, balance, uh, balance, you know, ba balance it out. Um, and uh, yeah. Vanessa, tell me about uh, about a little bit about you and, and, and Johnny, the dynamic, how is it working with him? Oh man, so, so wonderful. And I feel like we, we got really lucky and the show got really lucky too, because we didn't have a chemistry read. We just, Oh, wow. Yeah. We just got thrown together. Whoa. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and that is impressive. Very impressive. So it kind of adds an element to like, sometimes it just works out. Uh, but I think we've been able to build on uh, our working 
relationship together in a really lovely way because I mean Billy is so generous and honestly just such a lovely actor and person that it's easy to work with him so one of the first things that we did was when he's coming to the door and sort of pleading to Carmen to allow him <laughs> to uh, continue teaching her son and I just had to be there you know taking all of this vulnerability in with Billy and so I think that really built our trust with each other. So in everything that we have to do to, together, we're able to call back onto that and to build upon it and to just be like, okay, let's just really be in the moment, be generous with each other, trust whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. And that's where the magic happens. One of the things that I uh, really appreciate about the writing of the show is that unlike the Karate Kid and unlike almost, every uh, movie that involves action in Hollywood, the show doesn't have good or bad villains or super goody goodies, because even the bad guys, even uh, um, Ed Asner, you know, and- uh, I mean, Even you, Ed. Even Ed. Um, you have vulnerable moments, you have moments of, every single character navigating the waters from like you're wrong and you're, you know, you're right. The wrong and the right and good and bad. And because we're all human and we yeah. do that all the time. And we, you know, we, we flow, you know, flow from one to another. And I love that because they, they being able to do that with the show with every single character. And actually as, as an audience, I appreciate that. What do you think about it? I totally agree. I totally agree. I think maybe that's one of the things that makes this show so appealing yes. is that the characters are fleshed out. And, and honestly, like, even though Johnny is so outdated, like you, as an audience member, you love him, you're rooting for him. Yes. Even though he has all these qualities too, that you're <laughs> like, what an a-hole sometimes, but <laughs> um, you know, yeah, it's, and that is very much like life, you know, nobody is, super good or super bad we're all just with good intentions and sometimes they don't always show up in the world as we think they do you know like I know for Carmen she has her she probably thinks she's doing a great job but then at the end of season four she realizes she was making a lot of mistakes with her son so the you know. worst mother ever oh in the history no honestly <laughs> miguel is a little crap for doing that <laughs> not telling anyone i can't if my mom if i had done that to my mother Oof. i would not even like like i don't know what's gonna happen with miguel next season i don't know how far he's gonna make it whatever whatever but <laughs> my mom i wouldn't have even been able to get on the bus her sixth sense would have kicked in and i would have and i would have been like drop kicked like but from Shola, the bus I, I stop that, to my room. But I bet that your relationship with your father is not the same. Like, you know, Miguel is lost and, and he's looking for something, right? Yeah. He's looking for an identity. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, aren't we all? I, I mean, I, I, I feel like every it, it, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let's talk about the cliffhanger, that cliffhanger. Oh my God, they had to bring back another awesome character. We've seen him already in season three, but all right. Um, I know we cannot talk about season five, even though you already know because you have <laughs> And that is, you know, that is torture, but uh, let, let's talk about that cliffhanger. Um, the worst that poker face is, so I'm not even going to say anything for the next two to five minutes. I am going to pitch this one to Vanessa. Maybe <laughs> to, uh, I don't even. I'm. You know what's. You know what the hardest part is. The hardest part is when people come up and say like, "Here's my theory about what's going to happen." And it Mary was fine. talking about this early, earlier, and she was like, "I, but I really have the worst poker face when it comes to this stuff." So I'm excited about season five. And then you smile or you frown according to what you see, you know, and then they, they can guess. <laughs> well, I'm like, oh, maybe. Hey, you never know. <laughs> no. no, that was that was an awesome cliffhanger. Uh, let, let, let's talk about it. Um, because there's, uh, I mean, it came out of nowhere, right? One of the bad guys is going to jail. 
then the, the, the most supposedly sensitive of them both is not, he's a jerk. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, everything is crashing down. It's like a big old Jenga tower is like, yes. one of the pieces was removed and now everything Miguel is in shambles. And Miguel quits and Bobby loses, time for Hawk to shine. Uh, yeah, that was my least favorite part when Hawk shined. I was like, uh, really? get, this, get this guy off the screen. What? Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> kidding. No, no, no. I was like, oh, enough of this guy. Can we go back to the other shirtless guy, please? And then the female champion not actually being, well, we don't know if, if, if you know, what's going to happen with that. Is she going to, like, what, what's going to happen? Are we going to know. know that, you know, this was a pay trophy? You know, I think, you know, I think chances are, I'm going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb and say season five is going to address the cliffhanger in season four. If I can say. No anything, way. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, think it might. I think it, I, think it might. I think it might. And well, I think it might do it. But all, honestly, it's always going to do it in a way that you're never going to expect. Yeah. It's like, like, um, n- except for some people who somehow have like <laughs> come up and been like, this is what's going to happen. And I'm like, who sent you? But aside <laughs> from those people, nobody. We have to wrap up. And I, I would like to ask you, um, I mean, a, a, a little reflection about what Cobra Kai has meant in your life, in your personal life. I, I might, I, I, I don't think I'm wrong in saying that there is this new family aside of your family, you know, in this cast. And uh, what has that meant for you for the past four years? Holy cow, so much. I don't know if words could even encompass it. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing as a, as a child of the 80s, somebody who grew up with the Karate Kid influencing their life when they grew up being able to come together with this whole wonderful new cast of people, um, you, you know, new and old classic characters has been amazing. It's been full circle. And to just feel like, um, you know, I'm doing something right or something is going right in the cosmos to be included and to bring these characters forward into the, to, to the present and into the future. It's a complete blessing complete blessing. So I, I think I'm just learning to grow into the blessings and to uh, embrace them, fully accept them, allow them to change me for the better. So I'm, I'm here and I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. Hello. I am also here and happy. Um, <laughs> but aside from that, you know, I think um, I was saying this earlier, but you know, the experience of getting to work on this show as a adolescent teenager and kind of coming into my own as an adult my mom would argue that I'm not an adult but I'm coming closer to you are. that age yeah. um but getting to you know have these bonds with you know not only Vanessa and Billy but everyone on the show as everyone's kind of maturing has been an experience I've never had before um it, you know, I have that with only my family and my closest friends. And I feel like that's uh, maybe I'm a little, uh, I, I'm, I am fresh in this. In, like I, I, this has really been my first, like really big, long project. Um, not so fresh anymore, but you were. <laughs> not so fresh anymore, but yeah, exactly. Now I, now I kind of stink a little bit. Now, yeah, now I got body odor and everything, but, but um, that's kind of been one of the, an aspect that I never, that now in, in the, you know, looking past seems so obvious, like, yeah, these people are going to be your family, but I could have never imagined it going this good, going this well. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I wanted to tell you both that I actually have a friend who dated her son's coach. Oh. It, I, I swear. How did it, how did it turn out? <laughs> what was that? How did it turn out? Um, they, you know what, it's, it's kind of complicated because they lasted for like a year and a half, but now the son is in college, but they're very good friends with the coach. They continue to be good friends huh. <laughs> with the coach. All right. You know, right. so yeah, I mean, right. that happens. That might happen sure. in real life. Yeah. Maybe I hey, should. Who dated who? I lost that. 
my a, a friend of mine dated her uh, son's coach, baseball coach. Oh. <laughs> so he was saying it's, she was saying oh. she was saying it's like you. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and I was like. You know, reading sometimes the comments, you're not supposed to read them, but online, they were like, in the original Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi never dated Daniel's son's mom. Oh. Like, but this is different. It's 2021. Come on. Come on. It's totally Come on. Different. Get different. over it. Get over it. <laughs> Thank you class. so much, guys. Vanessa. Thank you. Ser, Cholo, great to see you again. Thank you. Thank Gracias, you. Daniela. Bye. Take care. Bye. Gracias. Bye. Ciao.